Good morning and welcome to Trading Places Live on Stock Charts TV. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and I'll be your host here at Trading Places for the next 30 minutes, featuring everything you need to know as you prepare for the trading day ahead. Well, Zach, uh, got another weekend in the books. Um, I tell you what, your summer's just about over there out in Seattle. I guess it is probably over. You getting a lot more rain now? Uh, yeah, we got a lot more rain going on right now. That is for sure. Yeah, we've got uh, restriction here in uh, just south of Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm just over the border in uh, in in South Carolina, and uh, we have not seen rain in a while. I mean, we had a couple drops about three or four days ago, and you know, I was re I was rejoicing uh, outside doing more of a rain dance, but it hasn't helped much. Still struggling. Yeah, no, we kind of live in rain, Tom. <laughs> yeah, if you could bottle some of that up and ship it out here, we could certainly. Yeah, no worries. That. That's typically what other people say to us as well. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into what's going on here. Uh, do have a uh, well, futures aren't so great this morning. We'll talk about that maybe in just a minute. But uh, you can see here on the on your screen um, that they got a few things lined up today. I think it'll be a really good show. Um, Want to get into our uh, market recap. Going to go through some upgrades, downgrades, uh, do a little uh, relatively speaking where I uh, show you a few uh, relative strength charts i think you're going to find those uh, pretty fascinating and really good to know in the fourth quarter some of the areas that i think are great areas to trade uh talk a little bit about sentiment and seasonality you know those especially seasonality one of my favorites and then we'll wrap up the show with three you must see but uh, first let's go ahead and jump into the action from yesterday and you can see here a lot of the uh, markets around the world i'm just going to focus mostly here on the us and honestly we could go either way. I mean, we got, uh, we've got we seen a couple of up days the last couple of days, um, you know, starting on the reversal on Thursday. Had a good day Friday. Yesterday wasn't so bad, although we did go up. You can see on the Dow Jones, test the 20-day moving average and fail. Same thing on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And, of course, the Russell didn't get close. Um, so, you know, this is an area, you look at the downtrend line from the past few weeks. This is definitely an area where we could turn lower. We're seeing futures. Well, last time I looked, the Dow was close to 200 down. I think the NASDAQ close to 50. So we might just continue to be mired in this uh, this downtrend sideways consolidation uh, that we've seen the downtrend for the past few weeks, the consolidation really for the past two to three months. Uh, that seems like uh, what we're what we're looking at here as we move uh, forward. As far as some of the individual groups go and sectors. Uh, well, I mean, it's more of the same. Technology, you can see, does have this downtrend. It was a great recovery at the end of last week. Yesterday, we were up intraday. But like we've done so many times here in the past three to four weeks, we've left a tail up there where we tried to get through, tried to break out, couldn't get, couldn't get it done, and came back down. And now we're setting up maybe for a little bit of short-term weakness. We'll see. Uh, consumer discretionary, same thing. All of these groups, most of these groups, anyway, struggling to get through these 20 day moving averages, as you can see. Uh, financials got right up there, touched it. Uh, communication services, I don't know if it touched, it got very close. Discretionary, not so much. Technology was the one that was above, but again, we're still in this downtrend. We look at some of the more defensive groups down here, you can see Staples uh, continuing to do pretty well. Sideways consolidating, same goes for real estate. Utilities recently breaking out to a new high. These low uh, treasury yields, certainly not hurting utilities. That is a, a source of income for those who are more income oriented and frustrated with the low dividend or low uh, treasury yields. Um, a lot of these utilities pay nice dividends. And so that's always a, uh, a, uh, an alternative for a lot of investors out there. Energy still not so good. Uh, we were back down yesterday after trying to rally for a couple of days. We're not far from breaking down below those August lows. And then finally down here at the bottom, you can see materials. Kind of the same thing. Big problem with materials and with energy, or one of the big problems is the strong dollar. The dollar continues in an uptrend. As long as that continues, I think it's going to be uh, really difficult for us to find a whole lot of great trades in energy and materials on the long side, other than maybe for just a day or two. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. Do want to mention that the uh, 10 year Treasury yield earlier today was down a couple basis points. So let's pull that up. Always. Uh, good to keep an eye on that. Um, I'm going to stretch this chart out a little. 
because I do think it's important to continue to look at where some of those lows were um, going back the last few years. And you can see the 134 low, 1.34% back in July of 2016. And then again, in early September, we got down low 140. So we're getting closer and closer to hitting that big uh, low there. And I think I could go back even a little bit further and probably pick up one more low. Well, it didn't quite get as low. Uh, but I think 135, 140 is a very, very big level. Um, I did have a um, fourth quarter market update yesterday for Earnings Beats members. And one of the things I talked about is the stock market tends to struggle when the yield is, is falling. And we've seen that throughout much of 2019, really since we topped at the beginning of uh, fourth quarter of 2018. And so the, the moves to the upside really have been restricted. We haven't had that big breakout and just take off. One of the problems is a lot of money continues to rotate into treasuries. So until this downtrend breaks and until we get the reversal back to the upside, I think we're gonna have some issues. Um, and just more consolidation, more frustration, uh, more fear. And that leads to some of the sell-offs and some of these big down days like we're seeing potentially today with uh, futures, like I said, uh, down almost 200 on the Dow. A um, couple of earnings reports that came out earlier. I did not get a chance to see what they were trading at, but I know Domino's Pizza came out earlier today. And uh, they reported that um, they were going to, or that they had uh, missed on their earnings per share. They had missed on their revenues. Uh, not a very good report. And when I look at it, you can see this Domino's relative to the restaurant group had been in a downtrend for months and months. Shouldn't have been expecting much, really, in terms of their earnings report. Another company, though, Helen of Troy, uh, H-E-L-E came out, had great numbers. They beat on the top line, beat on the bottom line, raised guidance. I actually talked about this in my Trading Places Live uh, show that I did over at Earnings Beach yesterday morning at 9 o'clock and talked about this company. And you can see the difference in the relative charts. Uh, first of all, the group is near a 52-week high. And then Helen of Troy relative to the group has been uptrending. So that's a completely different picture than what Domino's was showing us. And so as long as you've got this uh, move to the upside in the in the stock relative to its peers and relative to the S&P. And you can see right before the earnings report, it was setting a new 52-week high relative to the S&P 500. So Wall Street likes the company. That's what we should be getting from that. It doesn't mean that every time you see a company uptrending, it's going to come out with a great report and raise guidance. But I do think it is a there's a tendency. I think it's really important to understand relative strength and to see how these companies are performing heading into their earnings reports. Helena Troy was reporting great, and again, came out with a very strong report. All right, a few industry groups maybe to take a look at quickly. One was uh, the Vintners Distillers, that's the DJ USBN. And taking a look at this, uh, the reason I wanted to bring this up, we lost the 50-day moving average. It looks like we just lost this pullback and the low in the latter part of August. I now see a breakdown of this short-term trend to the upside, volume has picked up on this selling. Uh, the the PPO has turned negative. We're not holding PP or excuse me RSI 40. RSI now has gone all the way down closer to 30. There just seems to be a character change here on the chart for distillers and vintners uh, because of the selling here over the past few days. Unless we get a big reversal soon, I would expect this to go back down, maybe test this area between 400 and 405. Uh, airlines. Uh, airlines came down, printed a pretty nice little hammer right at support around 245. Intraday got down closer to the late May, early June low at about 237 and a half. This is an area where we'd like to see the airlines turn back up. I want to see transports do well. Airlines, among all the different areas in the transportation group, airlines to me probably the least important, but still, I want, I'd like to see airlines performing well and uh, Coming off of that recent low, we have started to rally. I'm going to be watching to see if this continues. Uh, another group I want to mention, I'll probably mention this again later in the show, computer hardware continues to trade well. However, it did break out and fail yesterday. Uh, we saw this about a week ago and had a pullback. I wouldn't be surprised to see another pullback in the short term, but I do think this is going to be an opportunity for the group going forward. If we get a pullback, I think you're going to want to look for stocks within the group like Apple. 
uh, that have been performing extremely well. All right, let's get into a couple of upgrades and downgrades uh, this morning. We saw a few banks being upgraded. Jefferies was pretty active in upgrading banks. Uh, BB&T was one that they upgraded. Um, I'm, well, let's go let's stretch this out onto a relative chart here before I have anything to say. We did get a breakout above all of these tops on BB&T. And the thing is, if you look at the banking group, the banking group has not gotten that kind of a breakout. So I don't even have to look down below to see that the BB, that BB&T relative to the banks is performing well. So the fact that they're getting an upgrade, I think it's, uh, probably well-deserved. I think Wall Street, uh, again, if you follow what relative strength and you follow the, the charts, I think Wall Street has already been upgrading the stock based on the way it's been trading. So I think this is a stock that probably goes higher. If you get a, a breakout in the banks down the road, this is the type of company that I would come back to uh, because it is uh, one of the leaders. Let's see, m and Bank, MTB. Uh, this one got an upgrade, and I think you see a different picture here. Look at the relative strength. Uh, I'm not really buying into this upgrade. I don't see the same type of behavior here that I see with BB&T. Um, I'm, I would pass on MTB. SunTrust gets an upgrade also from Jefferies. And this one with the breakout in September pulling back looks a lot like the BB&T chart. And the relative strength looks pretty good. So again, banks breakout. I think you want to come back and take a look at SunTrust. Regions Financial upgraded RF. This one, not quite, this is kind of maybe middle of the pack of these four. Started to show some relative strength in September, has backed off again the past few weeks. Did print that hammer on the 50-day moving average, so that's encouraging. But overall, I think this one's kind of in the middle of these four. I like uh, BB&T and SunTrust a little bit better. Microsoft upgraded this morning. Um, it's likely to help the software group, um, but software overall... And I think one thing I'm going to look for on Microsoft is whether or not we can clear 140. We've had a few candles here where you can see we've opened near 140 and have not been able to get through. So that might be something to watch here. Obviously, ultimately, we want to get a break above about 142, 142 and a half on Microsoft. But this has been one of the better software stocks. And it actually, when you look at the software index, you might think there hasn't been nearly as much carnage as there actually has been. And one of the reasons is Microsoft's holding up the index. A lot of the software stocks have gotten hit. Several of the really strong ones have begun to bounce back. We'll see whether or not maybe the upgrade on Microsoft helps uh, the software group avoid some of the uh, selling that we're likely to see in the market today, at least at the open. Okay, uh, let's see. Another one is Service Master. This is one I've talked about. I know I featured um, in my daily market report to Earnings Beats members last week. Uh, the stock had gapped up, came back down, got very close to this 54 level. This isn't a gap support area that I really like. When you get a gap up heavy volume and you trade up after it, you don't go back down and fill that gap. Then when you come back down and, and get to the top of gap support, a lot of times that's a an excellent reward to risk entry area. SERV, Service Master, came right back down to that area. Bounced the last couple of days now today, this morning, getting an upgrade. Downgrades, let's start with ALLY, Ally Financial. This has been one of my favorites in the banking area, but even before the downgrade, look at what's been happening here on a relative basis for this past month. <clears throat> ALLY has been not only moving lower here, but the volume hasn't been, hasn't been weak. It's actually been kind of strong, and there's been a lot of deterioration in the relative strength. So I would say this about Ally. It is now below its 20 and its 50. The 20 is quickly descending, getting closer to that 50-day uh, moving average. If the 20 goes below, of course, that's the death cross. We saw that once before. That wasn't the end game. But we do have potentially a left shoulder, neckline, and a head. So I would be watching $30 over here on the right side. That's where I would expect support and then a bounce. And I think what happens from there will probably determine what we think about Ally going forward. Checkpoint Software downgraded today. Uh, stock's been in a downtrend for a while. And look at the relative strength of software. Very poor. Not, uh, you know, I like to stick with relative leaders. Don't like the stock. Downgrade's not going to help. J.B. Hunt had been a leader in the trucking area. Uh, had broken out to a 52-week high versus the truckers. And it actually out been outperforming the S&P 500, even though the truckers had been you know, moving lower here the last few weeks. 
and we're way below the relative high from back in February. This is a group that I do want to see perform well. Um, you know, again, maybe it's wishful thinking. We'll have to wait and see. But truckers, if they could get, you know, moving, break back out to another high, I think we have an uptrend in play. If we can turn back up and break out, that would be awesome. But we're getting a downgrade here on JB Hunt. So what I would look for if is, is on this downgrade, we're likely to see a gap down, but do the buyers come back in? If we gap down below the 50 and keep selling off, that's not going to be a good sign. If we hold that 50, though, get a hollow candle, I think it's accumulation. So something to watch for on that stock today. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, relatively speaking. And what I wanted to do here, I keep a list of uh, relative strength of industry groups. And I'm just going to go through a few of these groups that I think are really strong heading into the fourth quarter. I went over a number of groups, a lot of groups last night with uh, Earnings Beats members. But I want to just share with you a few of these stocks that I think you're going to want to keep in, an eye on as we go forward. The first is in the consumer discretionary area, and it is footwear. I didn't like this relative downtrend that we had back throughout uh, the six-month period. And I was a little concerned when we were taking out these lows, moving to new lows, 20. This is a relative chart. So this is the 20-week EMA of the relative performance of footwear to the S&P 500. But when the price goes below the 20 and the 20 crosses below the 50 and your relative PPO goes negative, that's at least a warning sign. I would be out of footwear at that point. I wouldn't be interested in those stocks. But the group has rallied back, not only getting above moving averages and going positive on the PPO, but breaking to a new relative high. I'm going to talk about this group a little bit later when we get to seasonality. This, stock, this group loves September, and you can see the huge move that it made relatively in September, but it also likes October. So we'll take, uh, we want to continue to keep an eye on the uh, footwear space. Next up, um, we've got computer hardware. And I uh, talked about them just a little bit ago, but I'm going to bring them up again because on a relative basis, I don't know that there's a stronger group. In the last five months, we have been seeing this huge rally in computer hardware relative to the S&P 500. Uh, Apple's been leading it. Apple's broken out to a new all-time high. I think that this is a group that you want to focus on in the fourth quarter. Now, does it outperform every day? No. And in fact, we get a little bit of a pullback in the relative strength. That's when I would be more interested in looking at the group. Let's move over to the industrials and within the industrials defense stocks. I continue to believe this is a group that you want to look at strongly. Um, check out the, the leaders in the space. But this relative strength off that April low, that was a double bottom, came back up, took out that high right there, went through the 50. That was a great sign because right after that, you saw the PPO relative PPO turn positive. So big move there in uh, defense stocks. I think this continues to be a very strong area and then can't possibly talk about strength and relative strength right now without mentioning the home construction group low interest rates a, a strong economy or at least a a an economy that it, it's expanding with very very low interest rates great environment for this group and uh, it's reflected in the way they've been performing last two to three months you can see this has been almost straight up on a relative basis home construction doing very well and you can see that relative PPO up here near four and strengthening. Now we have seen it get up above six. So even though it's getting up there pretty high, I think it's got room to run. You can see when this group's on fire, it can last for a while. I think we're probably gonna continue to see strength here in the fourth quarter in home construction. Okay, sentiment. I wanna show you one chart, sentiment. And this is a chart I think that's worth following. For me, sentiment, I don't try to call tops, especially in a bull market. I love to try to call bottoms, though, because if you're in a bull market and you're hitting a major bottom, that is when you can make the most money in the stock market. So what I would simply say here is check out these green arrows and these bottoms. And down here on the bottom, I've got two sentiment indicators that I like to follow. One is the volatility index, and the other is the equity-only put-call ratio. Um, when the market gets really fearful, individual traders love to, to chase the moves to the downside, unfortunately. And you get a lot of equity calls, or excuse me, a lot of equity puts uh, being bought, 
near bottoms. Usually at a bottom, the equity only put call ratio is at an extreme. That's when everybody is the most bearish. Every, you know, you're seeing all the headlines that are horrible. Sky is falling. And so you think it's just absolutely going to continue. And so you're jumping all over the equity puts, and that usually marks the bottom. So here, when you check out these four green arrows, these are pretty big bottoms in the market during this bull market. Look at the tops in the VIX. This is a five-day moving average of the VIX, and this is a five-day moving average of the equity-only put-call ratio. So it just kind of smooths out those big spikes. Uh, but you can see these last two major bottoms in the S&P 500 2016 and then the fourth quarter of 2018, both came with the VIX, with a five-day VIX reading, a moving average reading of 25. Individually, I think the highs got up to about 35, 36. That was like the one-day high. That was the spike. So maybe that's what you want to look for. But from a smoothing out five-day perspective, you can see this works pretty well too. When this gets down when it gets close to that 25 level, you're probably you've probably seen a bottom, and uh, that's what this uh, these VIX readings show you. Um, as far as the equity only put call ratio, same thing. I mean, these bottoms you can see the huge spike, um, and then you get other spikes as well. You can look at these last two spikes, uh, marking these bottoms, which are more short term bottoms. Um, but the market gets fearful when you go down. For a few days, if we start rolling over again today and go down for a handful of days, we'll probably see it move right back up. Now, if there's one thing that bothers me about the market, looking at this sentiment chart, it's that normally when you're moving higher and breaking out like we were here or even back here, notice the VIX is putting in lower highs and lower lows here when we're breaking out lower highs, lower lows here, we're breaking out and we're getting higher highs and higher lows. Market's still very fearful, and this is probably the biggest obstacle that the market faces is we've got to get beyond all this fear before the market truly will make the move to the upside I think it's going to make. While we're still in this kind of an environment, we have to be on guard for another push to the downside. I'm bullish, but I'm not everyday bullish. I mean, I still recognize some of these things that we need to be careful, and that's one of them. All right, uh, seasonality. Just want to mention a couple things here first. Um, healthcare, it's been the worst performing industry group. Um, if seasonality has anything to do with it, we're probably in trouble for the rest of this month. Here's healthcare relative to the S&P 500. On average, over the last 20 years, healthcare, the XLV, has underperformed the benchmark S&P by a full percentage point or almost a full percentage point. Healthcare's only outperformed the S&P 35% of Octobers over the last 20 years. So only seven of the last 20 Octobers. That's not a good number. So odds are, are with the bears in terms of relative performance on the healthcare area. A couple of other uh, groups I wanted to just show you. The XLK, which is the technology group. Look at this October. Average is outperforming the S&P by 1.7%. Uh, just broke out to a new relative high on the weekly chart, the XLK versus the S&P. So it's hard, to, it's hard to get too bearish when you see uh, not just technology performing well on a relative basis, but also the seasonal pattern lines up pretty well for this group. Um, uh, communication services, looking back over the last 13 years. Pretty good outperformance in October, 1.5% over the S&P 500. A couple of the groups that I wanted to point out, um, talk about the footwear group uh, relative to the S&P. Go back over the last 20 years. That was the September relative um, outperformance that I was talking about. Uh, footwear loves the month of September, and that happened again this year. It actually does pretty well in the fourth quarter looking across here, although the odds of it outperforming go down but the returns are still pretty solid. So I think footwear is a group you want to watch. And one last group I want to really keep an eye on, internet stocks, the DJUSNS. Look at the, the relative outperformance in the month of October. Average is outperforming by 7.1% over the last 19 years, 83% of the time. So it's hard to argue with the group, um, you know, when you've got that going on. So... 
anyway, those are the uh, seasonality charts that I wanted to make you aware of. Just be careful with the healthcare group, even even solid areas within healthcare like medical equipment stocks, the DJUSAM struggle. That group struggles during the month of October. All right, let's finish with uh, three you must see. So these are just three stocks when I look at them, um, maybe based on the charts, based on the patterns, whatever. Uh, just three that kind of catch my eye that maybe you might want to be aware of. The first one actually is a pretty bullish chart. I mean, I like the stock. I just don't like what it did yesterday. Big volume, looked like it was making a breakout yesterday again, and then came back down. The, you can see the PPO is a little, you know, slightly lower on that false breakout. I don't know. This is just an, an area I'd be a little careful. If I was trading uh, Jabil, uh, which I'm not, JBL, uh, if I owned it, I probably would have sold it yesterday at the close, just short term as a short term seller um, or short term trader. I still like the stock further you know, down the road. I think this is a, definitely a stock that goes higher. When I pull it up on a relative chart, uh, you can see the huge move up, great volume trends here. I just think short term, that might have been a signal and it might break out. I'm not saying there's guarantee here, but that to me is enough of a warning sign that I probably want to book profits and maybe get back in on a 20 day test or maybe even just a trip back to test this 34 low that it hit just a couple of days ago, um, save myself 5% on the trade. That's what I would be looking for. So I thought this was a pretty important chart. And so I am going to annotate it and just save it. What I would be looking for to the downside, I think you've got price and gap support at 32 and a half, recent low down around 34. You've got your rising 20 day moving average coming in just above 33. So those are a few things that I would be looking for there. All right, uh, let's take a look at the second stock I have on this list. Um, and this is going to be a home builder, um, MDC, a stock that has just been absolutely on a roll. Um, it is making breakouts and unlike um, J Jabil, here you can see MDC, nice volume, and it actually is holding its breakout. So I'm not saying that it's going to continue going higher, especially in the down market. But what I do expect is that rising 20 day moving average to continue to hold. So this one, if I'm annotating, I'm going to be looking right there at that gap support and that rising 20 day moving average right there as well. I could even maybe do one more. And just, you know, looking at the home builders and the way this stock has been performing relative to its peers, relative to the S&P, and then the group relative to um, the S&P 500. I mean, this is definitely a stock that I would have on my radar and, and be interested in on a pullback. Last one I have is an oil services company. You know, we, a lot of the oil stocks not doing very well. This is an exception. LPG, Dorian LPG. Um, look at the group. It's been horrible, but on a relative basis, this one's been strong. Volume trends are incredibly strong. So I do think that this is a, a stock that you could uh, be interested in, in energy, but it is in a bad, bad group. So what that tells me is watch the price support, watch that 50 day. If that gives way, given that it's in such a bad group, then I would be careful. Otherwise, I think LPG looks uh, pretty interesting. So those are your uh, three you must see for today. Appreciate uh, you listening into those. Hopefully uh, they make a little bit of sense for you. And it is already the end of another show. So I want to thank all of you for uh, joining me today. Remember to tune in to Trading Places Live here on Stock Charts TV every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 to 9.30 a.m. Eastern. I also conduct a similar Trading Places Live show on Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 9.30 a.m. Eastern at earningsbeats.com. So be sure to check out my blog. Each morning I'll provide your webinar link there. Have a great day, and I'll see you back here Thursday morning. Happy trading. Mm -hmm.